Hello dear friends, welcome back to our channel and today we're going to talk about the 10 basic steps of how you can improve your mind health. Tip number one, digital detox. Make your phone clutter-free and remove apps you don't use on a daily basis. <clears throat> notifications from majority of your application and only leave the one which is really important for you. Like when Vera calls me. If you're working on very important task, turn on your phone upside down so it will not distract you. Also, turn off the race to wake function. Also, last tip, switch to grayscale so it's not enticing for you. So, to introduce a healthy relationship with social media, try and delete most of your social networking applications for maybe a week, two, or in extreme cases, even a month if you could. You'd be very surprised how much productivity increases you could experience. And in addition to that, develop a healthy relationship with your phone. Don't try and pick it up every single moment during the day. And when you can, leave it at home and go about your business as if you don't need it. And you'll realize that when you do this, your happiness levels will skyrocket and you wouldn't necessarily be comparing yourself to that perfect picture that you've seen on Instagram. By the way, guys, if you haven't already, consider subscribing because we do Mythbusters and health tips, tricks and hacks just like this one every week. And turn on the notification bell to remain updated. And another small part about digital detox, when you go to sleep, Try and use a traditional alarm clock rather than your phone. Or if you use your phone, turn off your Wi-Fi and turn off your mobile data. And maybe even go the extra mile and turn off your Wi-Fi router. The electromagnetic fields that are released through your phone and electronic devices such as your Wi-Fi router messes up with your circadian rhythm. And one last thing about digital detox, don't always go around lifting your phone, taking a selfie, trying to document every single piece of your life. Yes, do take it, but don't go ahead and take a sixth and a seventh and a tenth. Try and enjoy the moment with yourself and with your loved ones as opposed to a digital device in the mix. Tip number two, sleep more and better. Avoid using electronic devices just before going to bed. And if you really need to use them, use blue light blocker. Oh glasses. yeah, I have them. Create a friendly sleeping environment in your bedroom. So lower your temperature, aerate your room, spray lavender oil or even magnesium oil for better sleep. And close your blinds, have a dark room. Oh, exactly. Okay. On average, try to sleep six and a half to eight hours per day because it's crucial for your brain function. And actually we created a whole new episode about sleep and its crucial role in our life. So stay tuned for that. And also how to get good sleep. Sleep is so important for your brain function as it's linked with depression, anxiety, memory loss, and even digestive health and muscle growth. Because brain, like every organ in your body, produces waste. And yes. during sleeping, this is the only period of time when actually the waste gets removed. Mm, really nice to say. So with two tips in the bank, what did you do today to improve your mind? Not that challenging topic that you were at work trying to resolve, but when did you actually take a step back and actually looked at the thoughts that were passing through your mind and saw what they did to you? Whether it was driving you through happiness or through sadness. Tip number three, be active and nourish your body. We'll not rumble on this because we covered this before in our previous episodes, but this is actually interlinked. Your activity and the level of depression, anxiety, and anger. Stay active and nourish your body properly. The truth is simple. When you nourish your body properly, your mind isn't going in a cycle waiting for another sugar high or another meal. Tip number four, value yourself and stop comparing. Between friends, family, and work, it's very difficult to keep all of these elements in your life happy. And in addition to that, this might mean that you're neglecting yourself. So sometimes take the time to do something for yourself and have that me time. Sometimes I send Vera away. And <laughs> this helps keep anxiety and depression at bay. Treat yourself with kindness and respect and avoid unnecessary self-criticism. Things like, oh, I'm the smallest guy at the gym. Nothing goes my way. 
or I feel like shit. Or I would never be fit or thin or slim or whatever. Embrace your thick thighs. <laughs> Hashtag embracing your thick thighs. <laughs> but Beyonce have big thighs. Yeah, sure. Actually, true. Simply make time in your life for your hobbies, favorite projects and just broadening your horizons. Maybe you want to try new language. Maybe you want to sign up for dance classes. So just don't think how people are on Instagram when you're scoring are perfect. Just like, do it your way and just become a better version of yourself. They only put the best parts out there. Oh yeah, that's true. Number five, set realistic goals. The idea here is to construct a to-do list. Avoid procrastination and bring a sense of commitment. Make sure that you set out what you want to do across the day or even look forward towards the whole month and ensure that you overestimate the time required and then you can cross those things off to feel a sense of commitment. This is going to give you a peace of mind about what you have to do. And in addition to that, it's going to help you manage the tasks that you consistently keep putting off because you might be anxious about it or because you might think that it's too complicated. Thus, the nature or a mind of a procrastinator. Because you always tend to procrastinate when the task at hand is usually nerve-wracking or potentially debilitating. Even if you have a to-do list and tackling with some of the challenging tasks, supplemented with soothing music, exercise and complimentary breaks. Some of the most recent studies have shown you're most productive when you focus your attention in bursts. So work an hour, take a 15 minute break. This will ensure that your productivity and creativity levels are kept high. Tip number six, equally important to preparing a to-do list is writing down a not to-do list. Exactly, sometimes a long list of tasks may be very overwhelming. So think what isn't a priority for a following month, what can you delegate or what simply will not bring you closer to the goals you want to achieve and simply strike this off from your list. Because procrastination isn't when you mindfully push something to a later date knowing that it doesn't require attention today. It's only when you persistently push something off that requires your attention today. So actually what we want to emphasize to introduce a clarity to your mm. to-do list. Tip number seven. Stop multitasking. We've been consistently requested and forced to multitask, whether it's at our nine to five job or with the craze to do more with a limited amount of time. But this ultimately reduces your quality of work and your thought process and your focus on that element of work. And in addition to that, we've never been taught how to focus on a classroom environment. So rather than multitasking, give monotasking a try and focus your attention in intervals across your day. So if you have to review emails because your work is primarily based on email communication, have 15 minute slots every other hour, which you're gonna go through your inbox and clear that emails out. Tip number eight, meditate every day for three, five or even 10 minutes to build a habit. The benefits of meditation are far beyond this video. So if you want us to cover uh, this in another video, please comment below. Simply, meditation will help you gain a clarity, different perspective to life, manage the anxiety levels or even uh, tackle self-esteem problems. And increase productivity, sleep better, yeah. stress management, etc. And very important thing, you can't be healthy when you're chronically stressed. So meditation in the morning is the best choice you can make. Number nine, give yourself and work on a giver mentality than a give and take mentality. This came across from one of the recent books that we read. We'll link the book in the description below. Majority of the time we focus on a give and take mentality, especially in the cutthroat environments that we work in. So sometimes take a step back and actually help an individual without an ulterior motive. Whether it may be as simple as holding the door open for the, for the next person to come out of the mall or reviewing the CV of an individual who wants to get into a corporate environment. And also value your time and energy the same way you value money. Assuming you're not throwing money on the street or you're not buying stuff you completely don't need. The same applies to your time and to your energy. It's the one commodity that you can never buy back. Have you ever felt exhausted after a conversation with someone or you had a feeling or you felt uncomfortable or you had a feeling that the conversation emotionally draining you? So protect yourself from energy vampires and spend your time and energy wisely. 
I'm sorry that it's a bit harsh to call these people like this, but as Lucky just mentioned, try to surround yourself with uplifting people, which will inspire you and just make you feel better. And we're not saying to completely ignore these individuals. With you surrounding yourselves with individuals who are uplifting yourself, they might just naturally gravitate towards you, changing their mentalities as well. Last tip guys, tip number 10, break up the monotony. We're both advocates, or oh, maybe me more, a advocate of a daily routine and having a routine and a structured process and getting stuff done. But however, how effective that might be, we've had this discussion ourselves, that might come to a point that it becomes boring, less productive, your creativity drains. So introduce some sort of spontaneity to your daily routine or your monthly routine. So for example, we pick four or five days of the month and travel somewhere, which breaks out the routine and introduce new and exciting activities to our lives. Okay guys, as always, bonus tip. Get help when you need it. Don't be shy, reach out to us, your communities, friends, family, or even professionals. Because the simple difference between humans and beasts is empathy. So deep down, all of us wanna help each other. Okay guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, please give us a like, share and comment. That's it for this video and see you in the next one. Love you all.